On today's show, we get a little end of summer update when it comes to the Nick Robertson situation and Yanni Hockenpa. We'll detail all of that coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. What is it? Game Time. What's going on, Dave? How you feeling on a Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah, I feel all right. You know, it's getting the normal summer routine kind of down pat. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Not much summer left. No, no. So, like, you, it, it took you until three days before summer's basically over to get your routine down pat? Pretty so much. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. It's, it's about to blow up over the next couple of weeks, guys. God damn it. We're getting close. We're getting close. And you know it's close because you start to see a lot of like the the insiders start to make their radio appearances again. Like I know I, I Craig Button I heard on on Overdrive last week, and Chris Johnston makes an appearance on the morning show today. You know Elliot Friedman, he's kind of been in and out a little bit, but he he wrote a new Thirty Two Thoughts uh, column earlier in the week. So you know hockey's getting close when all these guys are starting to report back uh, and get back on duty. Um, and you know, there's a little bit of news, uh, I guess like the, there's really only two things this, this whole summer that never really got finished up when it came to the Maple Leafs. Like they, they got, you know, uh, I guess they, they ended up making a couple of moves, some signings and whatnot. And I guess they didn't really f- get the finality to the Marner and Tavara situation, but the only two things that really was still, left for the Leafs to do was Nick Robertson didn't get his deal. They did not get that done. And then um, the Yanni Hockenpah situation kind of lingered all summer long, which never got a resolution. That was the word I was looking for, by the way, resolution to to what they were doing this summer. Um, so those are kind of the two only things that really didn't get, uh, didn't get hammered out. Um, and we got a little bit of an update today on both of those situations, actually, from Chris Johnson, or TSN uh, hockey reporter, um, insider of the league and, and knows what's going on, pretty in tune with the Maple Leafs, obviously. So let's start with Nick Robertson, Dave. Um, we kind of spoke about it yesterday, how, you know, optically it sounds, uh, it, it looks like obviously nothing has changed from the Nick Robertson side of things from his camp, considering there is no deal that has been signed. We knew that earlier in the season, uh, in the off season, there was a report that he did not want to come back to Toronto, that he did not want to resign here and would have preferred a trade at some point over the off season. It never came to fruition, Dave. Uh, but Chris Johnson on first up TSN's first up this morning, uh, basically says it's still status quo as far as he's concerned when it comes to Nick Robertson. And, you know, that's the reason why we haven't seen a deal get done. Um, you know, by hearing this, I know we kind of speculated it on yesterday's show or on Friday, uh, Monday's show, but after hearing this, does it change your tune on maybe how the Maple Leafs uh, will end up kind of going when it comes to the Nick Robertson situation? I'm just kind of curious of how far Nick Robertson is willing to go with this, right? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I guess technically he could take it all the way up till November 30th. And then at that point, it's like, if you don't sign here in Toronto, you're not going to play this season. There, mm-hmm. there, there's that, right? That the Maple Leafs, that's the leverage that they have. Um, he can't really go elsewhere. I, although, I again, I brought this up before. You can still offer sheet Nick Robertson. Nick Robertson can be offer sheeted. So, like, yep. you know, you can come in and you can give him a deal at, like, $1.45 million on a one-year contract. 
it would pay zero in compensation. So you could get the player for free. I don't think the Maple Leafs would match that personally. I, I really, really don't. Um, I don't. I think that's a little higher than they'd be willing to go for a guy like Nick Robertson. Um, so, you know, that, that that is one way, I suppose, like that his agent could try and go out and get a contract elsewhere. Um, or maybe, you know, if, if a team thinks he's worth a third round pick, maybe go even a little bit higher to guarantee that the Maple Leafs don't match that deal. Uh, but outside of a, a possible offer sheet, he really doesn't have a choice. Uh, he can sit out the season if he doesn't really doesn't want to sign or, you know, kind of tuck his tail between his legs, come back and maybe play his way into a trade. Cause clearly one has not materialized that makes the Leafs happy enough uh, to, to make it happen. Well, that's it, right? Like if there was a easy solution for the Leafs, they would have done it by now. I just don't, I don't know how many teams can view paying for a guy who's only had 87 games played through four seasons, right? Like a lot of it's yeah. not all Nick Robertson's fault, but at the same time, you know, this was supposed to be the injuries. I mean, that's injuries or a big yeah. reason for it, which is it his fault? No, but you know, it's, it's, it's also not the Leafs fault. No, I mean, well, that's, it, that's hurt. it. Right. Like it's kind of, it's probably more so like the last couple of years, especially last year, like there was opportunity here, especially, you know, in the playoffs where you lose a top offensive guy, like William Nylander, Nick Robinson didn't exactly, you know, seize the opportunity to say, Hey, I'm here. I can, help provide a little bit of a scoring punch it didn't happen right so i think teams are probably like why are we gonna you know go all out to pay for a guy that frankly hasn't put it all together yet yeah no exactly so uh you know the the latest update is there is no update essentially um it's status quo nick robertson reportedly still uh you know hasn't softened on his stance still would like to get moved out of Toronto, but whether or not that happens, I do not know. I guess uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and find out and see, you know, if he reports to camp, you know, does a deal get done before training camp in a few weeks? We'll see. Uh, and when he does, you know, and it would be interesting to see what he has to say after this report has come out. It's, it's, it's almost now it's, it's, it's going to be tough for him to come back with, that getting so public and, and being talked about to this extent, even this deep into the off season though. Now. I mean, yeah, it, 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 but I mean, really be over for those who are listening, Dave was in the uh, middle of a cough and I didn't realize I had wrapped up what I had to say. And then he, he was like, Oh God. And I'm trying to get, <laughs> really get that. my bad brother. My bad. It happened. It's all good. It's it just, I mean, it kind of just also goes to show just how little there's been to talk about with this team in terms of the roster, right? Like, like it's not like the team has a big, like, not like other teams like Detroit. Imagine Detroit fans right now waiting for their big guys to sign and they haven't signed yet. And you're getting that much closer to, to training camp. For the Leafs, it's like, yeah, we just got a, you know, a minor player at this rate in Robertson to figure out. It's not like they have those bigger free agent names to talk about. So I I I'm I'm at a point where I'm perplexed and where this like how this kind of gets settled. Like one side's gotta just finally bite the bullet and decide to make a decision, right? Robertson's yeah. like I, I think for the Leafs sake, it's like how like it's just are you willing to sit out of camp and, you know, not take an opportunity to play some games and showcase yourself, right? Even if you want to move, like that's that to me. That I I said it before. That every means I think the best route for Robertson is show teams you're gonna battle and try to push for a spot in camp rather than be like ah I want to go somewhere else where I'm ex I, I I wouldn't say he's expecting a spot. But he believes he's going to get a better opportunity to compete for a spot. I don't know yeah. if it really works like that at this point. Unless you're yeah. going to San Jose. <laughs> nah, unless unless that that happens, yeah. Which that's yeah, possible, right? Mm -hmm. they, they they could use a you know some some young talent. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Yanni Hockenpah, though was another thing that uh, the Maple Leafs were unable to get sorted throughout the summer, and we get our first kind of look into what may have happened or didn't happen rather 
uh, with Ianni Hakampa's contract. We'll get to that and more on the other side. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only the incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I'm telling you, Game Time Picks, they curate and make it easy to save more on sports, comedy, theater, whichever event you're going to. They've got all-in pricing. Uh, They've got their seat views. You can get a panoramic view from your seat right from the app before you even purchase to know exactly the view you're going to get. They've got the lowest price guarantee. Or Game Time's going to credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Down the Game Time app, create an account, uh, use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I had a buddy today. Let me know. I'm looking for Bills tickets. I told him, go to Game Time. Use our promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get twenty bucks off that purchase. He texted me about an hour ago and said, "Thanks, brother. I owe you a beer." And uh, I will collect on that one. But <laughs> terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code locked on NHL for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. What is it? Game time. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you as we are each and every day here on the Locked On Leafs show, available wherever you get your podcasts and also up on YouTube. Uh, Yanni Hakimpa signed with the Maple Leafs. So we were told there was a report he had signed a deal two years, $1.5 million. And then another report surfaced from Steve Simmons saying, huh, interesting. Had heard through the grapevine that Hakimpa may never play again. He's got a, a, a bad knee injury. He's got uh, bone on bone action going on. And yeah, signing him to a, a, a multi year deal uh, may not have been a, a so smart decision, uh, according to Steve Simmons. Well, we've talked about this whole thing for months now. Uh, it's been a couple of months where we've wondered okay, what is going on? Did the Leafs sign him? Did they not sign him? Is it is it going to, you know, are they waiting on something? Like, we just didn't know at all what the heck was going on. Um, at the captaincy announcement, Brad Tree Living did come out and say that it was a situation that should be revo- resolved soon. It has yet to be resolved as we approach Labor Day weekend. Um, but Chris Johnson had an interesting development to the story. Dave, would you like to would you like to tell the people? the latest on the Yanni Hakampa situation. Yeah, I mean it's weird it's funny when, you know, contract details get out there and then Chris Johnson comes out and says, "We actually didn't sign a contract." Right? Like we were led to believe a deal was done, well, a because it was reported, terms, everything. But also Bradshaw Living spoke as if they signed a player to a deal. And so Chris Johnson's reporting pretty much what uh, Steve Simmons is uh, reporting, which is like it's pretty much bone on bow with the knee. And Hawk and Pop believes he could play, but I think there's obviously the Leafs getting some medical opinions to say, uh, maybe not. So it, it, it's it's interesting because Brad Living says like it's going to be resolved one way or another. Um, but like, how, like, how do you, uh, like the deals reported probably agreed upon. And now like, how do you go back to that? Like, how do you get to the point where you just figure it out? Well, apparently he didn't sign it. Like yeah. that's what CJ said. Like apparently it didn't get signed. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't really know exactly what happened or, or where the, the, miscommunication came uh i'm surprised tree living spoke on it publicly on july 1st and that's kind of what you know gave us the go-ahead to to talk about it and assume that this contract was was you know signed sealed and delivered um but it it turns out it it may not have been uh after after all that maybe there was a little bit of a hold up 
before getting completely signed and, and into the league office. And obviously that still has not happened. Um, I don't know where this is going to lead to. Like CJ didn't say this means that the deal won't come to fruition at some point. It still could possibly, but to me, I, at this point, like if, if you're that unsure about it, why would you like, I don't think you're going to want to go down this road and, be in the Yanni Hawk and Pop business if things are really that much up in the air about his health. Yeah, I, I, at, this, at this rate, I think the best case for the team to say is, you know what, like there's a deal, but we took a bigger look and it just it wasn't going to work out because of those injury concerns. I think considering it's been highly reported, I think many people are going to be like, ah, wish we had like found it, like why we get our hopes up. Like we're also talking about the seventh at worst, like at best sixth defenseman. We're not talking about their big ticket item. Right. Right. So that's where I'm just like, it's it's gotta make a decision. That's I think if you're on Hockenpah, you're also kind of like, uh, can we figure this out? Because if I got a chance to play for another team, I want to be able to go and do that. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't know if that's possible for him though. Like I think if he can play, I think the least would, I guess would be interested. Like they were, it's, it's just going to come down to, can he play? I, I don't know. That's, it's, it's a really weird situation. Um, that still is not, I guess, done, uh, still a work in progress, but at least we have a little bit of more information here with this report from CJ this morning. Um, but we'll see where it goes. I, I can say this, if the Maple Leafs don't bring in Yanni Hockenpah, it does kind of make you look at the depth of this blue line after the six that they have and make you wonder, hmm, is, is, are they deep enough? Do they, do they need to, to maybe make another addition? Uh, why don't we take a break? Let's come back and, and let's, let's dissect the depth of the team uh, at the team's blue line. We can look at the top six and, you know, how much far, how quickly does it drop off after that? And is that an issue for Toronto? So let's take a break, come back and get into all that. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano, Dave Morissuti with you. Um, Yanni Akampa was signed to a contract, so we thought earlier this summer, and we've kind of penciled him in as a, a top seven defenseman, we'll say. And a guy who's going to fight for that last spot in the lineup, uh, possibly a third pair guy, but maybe he ends up skating as the team's number seven defenseman, uh, but was a guy we expected to see, um, you know, in the NHL, an NHL body for sure. Uh, but if he does not end up signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs, Dave. What does this blue line look like after kind of the top six? Like, let's let's pull up one of our favorites. I don't know if you're pulling up Puckpedia or Cap Wages, whichever, whichever one you want to take a peek at, I suppose. Um, and, you know, kind of see how quick it starts to to dip. Um, so go back, go back up to the actual defensive roster really quickly. So this is what we're looking at now. Uh, this is what the Maple Leafs blue line looks like as currently constructed. So as of now, it does have Hawk and Paw on there. But again, it, it, this is with the assumption that he is not. Uh, you've got Morgan Riley, Chris Tanev, OEL, Timothy Lilligren, Jake McCabe, and Simone Benoit. And that's going to be your starting six. We'll see how it all shakes out with you know some some new blood in here and, and how they, they decide to go about the pairings. But... I would imagine injuries aside, that will be your starting six more nights than not for the Toronto Maple Leafs to start the season. But yeah. as we all know, Dave, go ahead. No, I agree. No, I, I mean, I don't see really any other changes you could look at and say, yeah, there's that thing mixed thing. I see that as the starting six. But as we all know, Dave, injuries are a thing and injuries yeah. will happen. <laughs> I've been told a billion times that Chris Tanev is is injury prone and will spend a lot of time uh, off the ice. So the team does need to have a couple guys past this that are NHL caliber 
and could fill in and hopefully not miss a beat. Mm-hmm. Simon Benoit became that for this team last year, and he turned out uh, turned out to be a pretty solid player and ended up getting a multi year deal out of it and is now considered you know one of the team's better shutdown defensemen. Turned out to be you know him and Jake McCabe were the shutdown duo. Like, is there another guy like that in the Leafs' current depth chart? That makes you think, okay, they've got seven, eight, nine guys deep or a couple injuries, you know, we're, we're not getting too, too thin. Um, or is, is it, is it bleak? Like let's, let's now go down to the bottom, Dave, and take a peek at the, the guys who are considered, you know, the depth, like the real depth, um, past the top six, you know, the injury depth guys. So we're looking at Connor Timmins. That's probably one. I think we could we could both yep. say Connor Timmins is probably a guy who you could you could fit in there as as a real NHL body. But then you're looking at Ben Danford, Cade Weber, Tommy Topi Nimala, Miko Kokonen, Noah Chadwick, William Billano, Nicholas Matnin, Marshall Refi, Dakota Mermis, and Philip. Uh, I can't read it. I gotta. Oh, sorry. I just know it's Phil Myers. That's it. Yeah. And Phil Myers. <laughs> so, I, I mean, again, once you, once you get past, uh, Connor Timmons, I, what do you got? Like there's, there's like, if, if you get two injuries, you're, you're reaching already to, to Dakota Mermies, Philip Myers region. Oh, I mean, yeah, I get a Marshall for five played some games last year, but if he was an option, they would have, had him play more games last year, right? And they wouldn't have made all those additions that they made at the deadline. This is where a lot of people have come to really push a game, push a how the Leafs haven't exactly done a good job internally with how they developed guys because the guys they have drafted, you know, namely, you know, the Wooden Villeneuve, Topi Nimala, like those guys aren't close. Now we say that now training camp there could be a different story but i haven't heard much to say look out for this young defenseman from the marlies that's going to push for a spot in, you know in training camp i just haven't heard that and that's that's the disappointing part and look again it's tough to expect a team to have eight nine defensemen ready to go but it just bothers me that there isn't one to say ah you know what i can see this guy getting a bulk of games this season I, I i haven't heard it and like we're not just talking about any defenseman we're talking about a potential hawk and pot like defenseman right yeah the one with a little bit of size that's got that physicality i don't know if there's really one from that list that says yeah i can see like even Karn timmons Karn timmons is anything it's not exactly the yanni hawk and pot type and when he tries it he just gets penalized for doing it because he's not it's not his game. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I think that uh, there's definitely a, a, there's a couple of guys out there maybe that they could go out and get. Like this is probably a situation where the Maple Leafs are going to have to, you know, maybe PTO a couple guys. Like who's who's out in free agency right now that that possibly could come in as as a PTO? I do have and a name. You got a couple names here. Uh, a couple might be a bit of a <laughs> might be might be tough to ask for a couple, but one that stuck out to me like right off the bat when I went and looked at RFAs or UFAs, sorry, that are available, and the name shouted me because he's got a little bit of familiarity with uh, Craig Berube during his time in Louis. Who it is? You got Robert Bertuzzo. Yeah. To me, that's like yes, he is thirty five. I read a, I, uh, an article from a couple weeks ago that said he's still looking to play and he still believes he's got a lot left in the tank. And like, if you're a team like the Leafs, you you can potentially sell him on, hey, this is a guy you know, you've played for him. You've had some good years with him. That's That seems like an option. If you're like, at least on a PTO. I'm not saying you're yeah. going to give him the Yanni Hakapa deal because – he would have gotten it by now. <laughs> no, I mean, any of these players at this point, you're probably looking at like league minimum anyways. Um, I think Bobby Bortuzzo is a good one. Um, you know, an Ontario guy too. So he might want to come and play for, for the hometown Maple Leafs. He grew up in Thunder Bay. 
uh, if I'm not mistaken. I remember being told. I think by... right now he's just hang. He ha- he has a place in Denver, which I found interesting. He's yeah, that is strange because he he never played in Colorado at all. I don't yeah. believe. Maybe he just really likes Denver. Possibly, maybe he's just uh, you know uh, loves the devil's lettuce. Perhaps maybe that's the situation with Bobby Bortuzzo. Um, but he's an option for sure. I wonder a guy like Jared Tenorti too. You know, he's a big body. He's someone who's you know been mm-hmm. like a. He's if you look at like hits per sixty, he's always up there. You know, block shots. So he could kind of come in and be a physical, physical defenseman who could, you know, who spent some time in the American League too. So shuttling up and down between the the AHL and the NHL wouldn't necessarily be foreign to him. Um, he's someone who, you know, you wouldn't mind having as your, your eighth or ninth defenseman on the depth chart. What about a guy like Alex Goligoski, you know, veteran defenseman. I know that Toronto in the past has been interested in adding a guy like Goligoski, who's got some versatility to him. Um, he's getting up there though. And he's like 38 years old now. So he's, he's kind of, kind of getting up there in age. So whether or not they want to, you know, go that old with this, uh, with, with this, you know, type of player, but um, you know, I, I, it's just kind of one other name that stuck out to me when I looked at the list of, of UFA still out there, anyone else kind of stick out to you? Uh, it, it's, it's really like short, like for that geo, do you bring back geo possibly? I, I just, I mean, I just don't know if that's going to appetite, like be, no, he wants to do that. Like that's that's the thing. Like we're we're talking about guys who probably when everyone's healthy, they need a guy mm-hmm. who can go down to the Marlies and then come up and play for the Maple Leafs when like yeah. two or three injuries occur. That's the guy I guess we're talking like about. Like someone yeah, like he's gonna to, be waiver guy. To pitch that for like Goligoski or Giordano. Yeah, yeah, it could be waivers too. Like after at the end of training camp, they maybe claim a guy off of waivers and then try and, you know. Send them down at some point a little later. One other player that I thought of too, uh, and I, I think I've I saw an article on the Leafs Nation about this about a month ago. It is uh, Gustav Lindstrom. Some think that maybe he could be like the another uh, Simon Benoit sort of thing, where the Ducks just you know kind of let the guy go, right shot, bigger body player. And, but, and he's that age where it's like shuttling between the AHL and the NHL is yeah. right about what he'd be expecting too. So yeah, that's another, that's another possibility as well. And then it's just, you know, I guess the, the, the thing you have to also consider is, you know, do you want to try and give some of those young guys a chance? Like the William Villanoves, the Topi Nimalas, the Miko Kokonins, you know, like that's also a possibility as opposed to building it out with, with a bunch of veteran help. Maybe you just, you know, sit there in training camp and you 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 tell a bunch of the young guys, hey, there's a bunch of space. Like we're looking for, you know, mm-hmm. guy eight, nine, ten on our death chart. Come out and grab it. You know, grab it. And then when we need a guy, boom, we're calling you up, Coconut. Boom, we're calling you up, Villanov. Topiniemla mm-hmm. finally getting his opportunity. So that's that's another possibility too. You could try and, and fill it from within if if some of these guys can take that next step um i guess though though that's really kind of where you're at at this point in the summer yeah and again it'd be nice if we could just say you don't need yanni hakapa you got this guy now delayed like are we like again gonna be really upset if yanni hakapa doesn't sign probably not he was viewed as a, a depth defenseman anyways but yeah it, it, you you would just like the assurance that you've got a guy that if in it, and we're not talking about one injury, we're talking about multiple injuries, which has happened to this yeah. team. And you are like the reason why Kokanen and Rafai were even playing games were because the Leafs had s- multiple injuries and that forced them to go and look at their depth. Let me see how many Maple Leafs def- the def- or, or defensemen the Maple Leafs used last season, how many different defensemen played in a game for the Leafs. And now it's a little different, I suppose, when you're looking at because of the, uh, the deadline and stuff, but um, 
So yeah, I, I would say Connor, probably like guys that weren't traded for in season. So Connor Timmons, Marshall Rafi, Morgan Riley, Jake McCabe, Ilya Labushkin, Timothy Lilligren, Maxime Lajoie, William Lagason, John Klingberg, Giordano, Edmondson, Brody, Bennett, or uh, Bennett, Simone Benoit. So that's 13 different defensemen played at least one game for the Maple Leafs this upcoming And two summer. were traded for. So 11 yeah. that started with them with camp. Yeah. So like Will Lagason was like, that's the type of player we're talking about, though. It's like a Will yes. Lagason, a Simone Benoit, a Max Lejoie type of player. Someone who, you know, has NHL experience and, and in a pinch play NHL minutes, but probably is more so suited to be an AHLer. Like Dakota Mermies is that guy. And, and I think at this point, I would mm-hmm. probably pencil him as like the eighth defenseman. So like if two injuries occur, Mermies is probably that guy who's going to come up. But it yeah. can, can they get someone better? You know, like I'm, I still want to wait and see on him, I suppose. Uh, see yeah. what he looks like in, in, in the white and blue before I, I write him off. You know, like maybe he can give you that Simon Benoit kind of kind of vibe this year who knows but uh you know may, maybe there's one more addition that they could make um to replace i guess the yanni yanni hawk and uh, depth or loss of depth with that guy if he doesn't become a maple leaf all right buddy anything else you want to get to uh before we with take off for the for the rest of the day you know, we'll save some of what's next for Friday because there's really not much else, unfortunately, right now. Yeah, Friday. Remember, Friday. So we'll be doing another power ranking uh, mm-hmm. on Friday, a little Friday five pack. So be sure to make sure that you, uh, you know, download the podcast, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts at, and also up on YouTube. Uh, new new episodes coming out uh, starting in a couple of weeks. They'll be every, every Monday through friday five episodes a week monday through friday so make sure you're subbed up wherever you get your podcast and also on youtube you can follow us on x at mickey underscore canuck for myself at d underscore more and follow the show as well at locked on lease thank you all for listening and supporting the show we'll be back with another episode for you guys on friday until then keep it locked right here on locked on lease